Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is an insane paradox of the game. On the one hand, it's kind of bad because it's riddled with issues, but on the other hand, it has sexy Darth Vader, which is kind of how I pick what games I play, so, you know, I have to cut it some slack there. Now, you might think, oh, Sonny, you know, you're just mad because the game was too hard. And to be honest, you'd be absolutely right. This game was not at all good for my brother or my blood pressure. On a more serious note, today I'm going to go ahead and do a full review of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Here we go. Carlos, this is where you edit in that little... Let's go ahead and start with the pros of the game. The story was, for me, by far the best part of this game. If you're a huge Star Wars fan, you might play this game just for the story, and my guy, they even made an entire mode just for you. I really, really loved Cal's journey, and it introduces some great characters, like Grease, BD-1, who is by far the best droid in Star Wars history, fight me, and Marin, who I kind of want to step on me. All in all, the story felt really fun and complete, but still open enough for more fun in the future, which I think is arguably the best way to handle a story, especially when you're dealing with something like Star Wars. As someone who's way too much of a wuss to play Dark Souls and Sekiro for fear of getting my ass whooped, Fallen Order felt like a great introduction into Souls-type combat. It was fairly approachable with four difficulties, but I didn't like the jump from Master to Grandmaster. I started off the game at Grandmaster, and I thought it was too much, so I turned it down to Master, and it was a noticeable difference. My brother actually insisted on keeping it at Grandmaster, and I heard a lot of screaming while he was playing it. To borrow a phrase from Dunkey, I think the game went from tough but fair to tough but you. I played on Master, but I have to say again that I really enjoyed playing on that difficulty. This game basically delivered on everything I wanted from it combat-wise. Before I get to the cons, I want to talk about today's sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. Raid Shadow Legends is... No, I'm just playing. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that to you guys. Also, uh, I'm definitely never getting sponsored. By the way, notice the runtime of this video. You see how long I took to say the good stuff? Look at how long I'm about to take to talk about the bad. Let's get into the cons. Okay, you've definitely heard about the graphical issues this game has. It is literally broken, and I do not know how it got to the market in this state. <laughs> oh. Ah. oh, look out. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Wreck him. Punt him. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, he Whoa. did get, uh, pretty right. much get punted, yeah. I didn't expect him to, like, float away, like, like low gravity like that. That was pretty... Uh... Oh, nice prize. But what you may not have heard of are the loading times because they are atrocious. Holy crap, dude. Loading screens in this game last from like 30 seconds to a minute on average. It actively made me want to die less because if I didn't die, I wouldn't have to just sit in silence in my chair for a full 45 seconds before I could play again. A lot of people have been saying that this is game of the year, but no game of the year should have these kinds of problems. Even Breath of the Wild, which came out two years ago on the Switch, which is a console that is noticeably worse graphical performance than the Xbox and the PlayStation, doesn't really have graphical problems beyond a few frame rate drops. Let's get to the next con. So quality of life is just kind of small gripes that I have with the game. These are things that could potentially even be fixed with like a patch later on, and I really hope they are, because these I really hated these. Like for example, why doesn't this game let you fast travel back to your Mantis, the, the ship that you have? Seriously, I know that I'm stupid, but I will literally spend 30 minutes painfully, painfully backtracking through an environment, fighting a crap ton of respawned enemies just to see what's next in the story. Why not install a quick fast travel feature? Why doesn't this game let you auto climb? The game forces you to grab onto something and then hit your left trigger to climb? Why? Why can't I just climb it? Like, if I'm grabbing onto it, I should probably be able to, you know? Why do I have to use skill points to increase my health instead of just increasing them when I get skill points? These are relatively small problems, so I'm not going to take off too many points. But remember, you've got to see that small problems add up over time. 
and I really hated these in the game, so I'm hoping they get fixed in future patches. I'm not 100% sure how to explain a lack of content, even though that's kind of the job of this video, but I think the best way to do it is to compare this to the past games of the year. The game could be doing just so much more than it does right now. For example, it has like 30 outfits and they're all palette swaps of this basic poncho that you start the game off with, and most of them are really, really ugly. You're telling me these guys were working with freaking Star Wars of all things and couldn't figure out a single alternate outfit? People are saying that this is game of the year, but it doesn't hold up to that standard at all. Both Breath of the Wild and God of War had actual cosmetic items that affected gameplay and rewarded you for actually exploring. Meanwhile, Fallen Order made me want to stop exploring, because I knew that if I found a chest, it would probably just be a stupid poncho that I wasn't going to use anyway. Speaking of having cosmetic items that affect your gameplay, it kind of leads to my next complaint. There was no buff and debuff system. For a game based off of Souls combat, they left a really crucial element behind and it's something that like all modern RPGs have, buffs and debuffs. I'll admit that I have a Zelda bias, but that game handled buffs and debuffs perfectly to me. It rewarded exploration and combat by giving you raw materials you could use in a pinch, but also gave you the opportunity to cook them and develop new, more powerful items to help you in your quest. Can you tell that this whole video is just an ad for Breath of the Wild? It is seriously my favorite game of all time and I really want you to play it. Okay, thank you. Fallen Order even makes you find seeds for your ship to make it more pretty as you play the game, and they do nothing. I was so expecting that to lead into like a cooking system or something, but nothing. That was such a top 10 anime betrayal moment. Overall, the game provides a solid framework for the future in the form of a sequel with its combat and story, but lacks power in other areas, like the graphics, the quality of life, and a lack of general content. For that, I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. I think it's a fun game to play if you're someone who likes Souls games or is really into Star Wars, but that's about it, and I think you'd get a similar experience from just watching a playthrough on YouTube. That's going to wrap it up for this video. Please make sure to leave a like and let me know what you thought of the game as well as other games I should review. Make sure to subscribe today to join the TR Army and hit us up on social media, links in the description. Random Recorders, peace out.